the murder of Nina Reiser, case analysis. The couple met first in St. Petersburg, Russia. Nina was last seen alive on September 3, 2006. The key witnesses were a forensic technician, police, and a traffic officer. A sample of blood matching Nina Reiser's DNA was found on a bag in Hans Reiser's car and on a pillar in his mother's home. In addition, a 40-piece socket set, a receipt for the purchase of the socket set, four seat belts, and a ratchet wrench with a socket on it were some key material evidence in the case. Nina's Honda car would be processed by involving the police in areas it had been spotted along SR-13, Warren Freeway, while Hans's vehicle could be tracked using police surveillance in all directions along Acton Street. The mobile phone would be processed by tracking the last communications in the cell phone for further investigation. On Monday, July 7, 2008, Hans took the investigators to the shallow grave where he had buried Nina. The body harm and destruction indicated the degree of murder, and Hans will be sentenced next on March 2023. In his court defense, Sean tried to evade being associated with Nina's murder. Rory was important in the murder witness case since he was with the mother when she disappeared and could give testimony of occurrences. Having children testifying might hinder fair judgment since they might be easily influenced. A child should start testifying at 12 years old. Sean was important in this case because of his closeness to Hans and his past murder cases. Having Sean testify before the court, there would be proof of more evidence which would assist the court since he might have assisted Hans in committing the crime. The defense attorney might have wanted to avail more evidence of how the murder took place by bringing Sean to the courtroom. Nina moved to Russia because she was escaping from the constant threats and intimidations from her husband, who had not known his children for quite a long. In the eventuality of an individual mysteriously lost, the relatives, fellow employees, or any other relevant person can file the report. Once the case has been reported to the police, they should act immediately to search for the missing person. Hans could have been curious to trace his children and pick them up without his wife's knowledge. The physical evidence was important since it proved the magnitude of the crime committed. It is possible since a person can easily differentiate a recent occurrence from a crime committed over a long period. Nina has indeed been injured or killed in her mother's house, and later her body was ferried to a dump site. Hans was guilty and could try removing the necessary evidence to assist the police in their investigation. Besides, Hans could have hired people or recruited murderers to follow his wife before paying them. It is rarely common to prosecute a person for murder when there is no body since it gives enough evidence on the degree of murder. Therefore, it would be hard for a defense attorney to prove his case when there was no body available. Hans did not want to prove that he was guilty of an offense and requested an alternative verdict which is not harsh as the second-degree murder verdict. At the court, Ora made opinions based on Hans's erratic behavior to show that he was guilty of an offense. The defense lawyer was considerate and non-judgmental to allow for the possibility of occurrence. Based on my opinion, I would have found Hans guilty since his constant disturbances and unusual presentations during the case proved that he was guilty of the murder. The decision to sentence Hans was appropriate since it assisted in providing critical evidence. Finally, I would not let Hans out of parole since he has not proven a change of suicidal behavior.